Hello again, it's Dr. G. I am the founder of FCMW in Hollywood, Florida. I'm a trained internal medicine physician specializing in the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of a multitude of both acute and chronic medical conditions. One of the most common health conditions I see daily is obesity and all the issues that come along for the ride. Did you know that before his death in 370 BC, Hippocrates was credited to have used lifestyle modifications such as diet and exercise to treat diseases? That includes diabetes. He also observed that obesity and a sedentary lifestyle had a negative impact on women's reproductive health. Since those ancient times, we've been able to collect enough data showing generally that lower body weight is associated with a lower risk of chronic illness, complications, and decreased risk of premature death. The data also shows weight loss via incorporation of lifestyle modifications like low calorie diet and exercise, the use of weight loss medications, or bariatric surgical procedures decreases the incidence of a wide variety of weight related illnesses. This has led to the modern medical world to constantly look for ways to reduce weight and obesity in all of our patients. The simple answer is eat less and exercise. But for most of us, it's just not that simple. This has led to the development of weight loss medications and more surgical procedures. Surgery is invasive. It can be very costly, usually involves some amount of downtime, and generally is not a great first option for weight loss. On the other hand, most weight loss medications developed over the years have failed largely due to severe or serious side effects, making the medications intolerable to the large majority of patients and therefore not very useful. But in 2005, the first GLP-1 agonist, Exenatide, was developed and FDA approved for the treatment of diabetes. Later, other GLP-1 agonists gained approval by the FDA for the treatment of diabetes and obesity in properly selected patients. You may have heard of some of these medications, of which there are seven currently approved for use in the United States, with names like Manjaro, Ozempic, Wegovi, and Trulicity. Let's dive into the GLP-1 agonists as a class of medications to give you a good idea of how they work, some of the myths about them, why there is so much interest in them for weight loss, and finally, to help you decide if GLP-1 agonists are a good treatment option for you. Let's first start with the actual hormone glucose-like peptide 1, or GLP-1. GLP-1 is a naturally occurring hormone produced in the small intestines in response to food. Its main action is to stimulate glucose-dependent insulin release from the pancreas, but it also has several other benefits, such as slowing down stomach emptying to make you feel fuller longer, inhibit inappropriate glucose release from the liver after a meal, keeping the blood sugar more stable, and suppressing appetite resulting in reduced food intake throughout the day. When released, GLP-1 hormone works for less than 10 minutes in the GI tract and in the hunger centers of the brain before it gets broken down very quickly by an enzyme called DPP-4. Whereas GLP-1 medications like Wagovia and Ozempic do not get broken down as quickly, generally lasting in the blood for about a week and therefore have a stronger sustained effect over time. This is one of the main reasons that makes GLP-1 agonists appealing to patients because the medication only needs to be injected once a week and still be very effective. Some other interesting actions of GLP-1 hormone and GLP-1 medications are, they increase lipolysis promoting fat removal, increase glucose usage at the level of muscle, thereby lowering blood sugar, provide protection of the heart from injury, reducing cardiac issues, increase metabolism resulting in calorie burn, inducing increased weight loss, all the while slightly decreasing blood pressure. The most significant net effect of GLP-1 agonists is an overall lowering of blood glucose levels, especially in type 2 diabetics, in conjunction with metformin and inducing significant weight loss in high-risk obese patients with or without chronic issues like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or atherosclerotic disease. Another likely reason GLP-1 agonists are gaining popularity amongst diabetic patients and obese patients is its favorable side effect profile. The most common side effects being nausea and vomiting occurs in only a minority of patients treated. 
This appears to be partly due to overeating on a full stomach. Other common side effects may include diarrhea, dehydration, and some patients have complained of dizziness and headaches, so hydration is key. Finally, there is a very low risk of low blood sugar in patients also being treated with other medications for diabetes outside of metformin. Contrary to your social media feed, less than 1% of patients experience acute pancreatitis, and this only occurs in patients who have had a previous case of pancreatitis. Contraindications for the use of GLP-1 agonists include allergy to any other GLP-1 agonist medication, pregnancy, gastrointestinal diseases such as gastroparesis or IBD, established thyroid disorders, or a history of a unique set of cancers known as multiple endocrine neoplasia, medullary thyroid cancer, either in the patient being treated or in the patient's family history. And due to the small chance of acute pancreatitis, I personally would be very cautious in starting GLP-1 agonists in patients with the history of pancreatitis, but this is not a listed contraindication in the manufacturer's insert. Let's focus on two of the most popular brands of GLP-1 agonists in the US, which is just one medication with two separate brand names, and that is semaglutide, which is marketed in the United States as either Wagobi or Ozempic. Ozempic is FDA approved for their treatment of type 2 diabetes and usually given with metformin. The doses of semaglutide in Ozempic are lower than in Wagobi, which has a primary indication for obesity all by itself when the patient's BMI is greater than 30%, or in obese patients with a serious medical condition if the BMI is greater than 27%. In my opinion, both Ozempic and Wagovi have become extremely popular for weight loss because of the ease of use as a weekly injection placed just under the skin and their ability to consistently decrease weight by as much as 18 to 20% of total body weight in as little as two to four months in the right patients and in conjunction with a low calorie diet plus exercise. In my experience, the weight loss can last even when the medications are discontinued, especially if during the time on the medication, patients create new lifestyle habits based on healthy living. Otherwise, patients can choose to remain on the medication for as long as it is tolerated. For patient safety, I recommend consultation and close follow-up with a physician when the decision is made to start any GLP-1 agonist, including semaglutide, and there will be need for counseling and close monitoring for potential side effects for as long as patients continue to take the medication. One of the myths out there right now about GLP-1 agonists is that there is a shortage of the medication because there are people accessing the medication improperly. From what I have seen, this is simply not the case. For the most part, patients are carefully selected based on their risk profile and medical history before they are approved for the medication by their insurance. I am sure there are a minority of patients who are on GLP-1 agonists who do not fit the exact profile I outlined a moment ago. But considering all the lesser expensive medications available and widely approved by insurance payers, clinicians have a multitude of options to treat our diabetic patients. And I have never had a diabetic patient get approval for the GLP-1 agonist from their insurance and not get it from their pharmacy due to it not being available. With the success I've seen patients have on GLP-1 agonists, I personally would like to have all my obese and type 2 diabetic patients on any of the GLP-1 agonist medications, if they can tolerate it. But I've been limited only by denials by insurance or patients' ability to pay the copays for it. Another common misconception is GLP-1 agonist medications are a permanent cure for obesity. That is simply not the case. I like to tell my patients, the medication is a great help at forming healthy lifestyle changes by taking your mind off food all the time and giving you the time to concentrate on creating a new and improved version of yourself. Research has shown that once the medication stops, two thirds of the weight will return if newer, healthier habits have not been formed and maintained by the patient. In summary, I'm excited for the possibilities of GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide, and after reading the literature, I've decided to offer it to my patients at my FCMW location. The program includes periodic labs and constant physician-led counseling and monitoring. If you would like to know more about how I am using the GLP-1 agonist semaglutide in my office to promote weight loss, resulting in decreased chronic illness and decreased overall mortality, feel free to reach out today to schedule an in-person evaluation at my office. 
I really hope you found this information useful. Please leave your comments or questions about our physician-assisted semaglutide weight loss program below, or feel free to message me directly. Again, this is Dr. G at FCMW in Hollywood, Florida, and I thank you for your time. Thank you.